Well, hello and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy with a special request today. I was asked to have a look at this video and infrared photography of Mount San Jacinto from 123 miles away in Malibu, California. This is an excellent video by Jay Tolan Media One with some beautiful imagery in it, and I encourage you to go have a look. This is being touted as a proof of the flat earth. We'll see about that. I started off the year by going back to Malibu. The air was clear as can be and visibility the best I've seen it. We'll be watching the world in the visible spectrum then switch to infrared and you'll behold the world like never before. So I walked out at the Point du May Natural Preserve, very nice observational location and most of my filming was from about halfway up, it was a bit windy so I stayed on the left side of that uh, uh, hill there. And uh, anyway, here's a clip, this is what you saw in the visible spectrum you could barely see Mount, Mount Baldy there and that's point uh, Palos Verde right there and Catalina uh, kind of like through haze atmospheric haze the altitude was about a hundred and fifty feet right about here and up top is about two hundred feet um, and uh, I'll use that later to do an analysis of what we're seeing. Now let's zoom in a little bit here to see. Uh, this is just a photo. See, we can barely see Mount Baldy. It's about 70 miles away. But notice we don't see anything else out there. But in infrared, it will show up clearly. Have a look at this miraculous imagery. Look at that. San Jacinto. From Point de May. That's unbelievable. Now let's have a look at some high resolution infrared photos. Look at that folks, so much resolution, 24 megapixels. This was taken with the Sony Alpha 6000 converted to 830 nanometer uh, infrared. Look at that, just incredible. Infrared is an amazing technology, folks, but even more amazing is what it reveals. Behold the flat earth, folks. This image is so powerful. Just have a look at this, folks. That mountain is over 123 miles away. If we were living on a globe, that mountain should not be visible. Okay, the first step in our analysis will be to identify San Jacinto's peak, and then we're going to draw a line of sight from that peak to his observation point over in Malibu. 
The path where he uh, took the photograph from is approximately 150 feet in elevation, and the clearing on top of that little hill is indeed at 200 feet. Now next we'll head over to Walter Bisson's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator, and let's start putting in some numbers. Uh, first we'll switch it on over to Imperial because this is America. Then we're going to put the observer height of 150 feet in, the target distance 123 miles, and the height of the mountain which is 10,834 feet. Pop standard refraction. And then come on down here and see how much of that mountain should be visible. And there we are. It looks like about 4,550 feet should be visible and 6,230 feet or so should be hidden behind the curve of the Earth. So despite all of the flat Earth rhetoric, this mountain is clearly visible from that distance. Now our next step is going to be to pull up our line of sight again. And let's go ahead and get an elevation profile on that and find where 6,230 feet would be about on the side of the mountain. Now we use our line tool and we're going to identify our elevation. And then basically we're just going to draw a short little cross line at the approximate elevation. And we'll save that line so that we can refer to it later. But in the meantime, we'll go ahead and take it off. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come back a little bit, maybe a few miles, and I'm going to find a location where I can drop down to about 6,000 feet and then turn and have a quick look back at the mountain. Now, as you see here, I can get a little bit closer to the mountain and just get some nice detail out of that right along the line of sight from Malibu. And I'll snap a quick screenshot of that. Okay, so as I'm doing this, you're going to notice that I have the line of sight listed here, but I don't have the cross mark with the elevation on it. Now, there's a reason for that that will become apparent here in a moment. So now I'm going to head over to my applications and I'm going to boot up a program called PhotoPad. There will be a link to that in the description. And then as my base image, I'm going to open the file that had the infrared photograph from Malibu to bring up the mountain. As such. Now, next we'll go back and bring up the image from Google Earth of Mount San Jacinto. We're going to use the one without the cross mark with the uh, altitude on it. And there we are. Now by playing with the opacity of the image uh, that I overlaid and moving it around a little bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get it to match up to the photograph. And we'll see what we have. Now I'll just sit here and play with this for a minute. You notice that we have a mountain peak. Then we have a shoulder of the mountain, and then to the right we have a secondary peak down there. All of these are in the Google image, and we should be able to line them up relatively nicely. Okay, after squiggling with it for a little bit, I'm pretty happy with this image right here. I think that lines up nicely. We've got the mountain peak, we've got the shoulder, and then we've got that side peak to the right. Now if you review that process, you'll see that all I had to work with was the line of sight and the Google image of the mountain. And as I went through it, I was able to line it up very nicely. You can see the, the dark water of the Pacific. You can see the sharp black line of the horizon with the city of Los Angeles just over it. And there's the final result. Now I'm just going to repeat the process using the image of the mountain from Google that does have the cross light on it. And we're going to see how that compares to the horizon in the infrared photo. Now obviously this takes a few minutes. It's just a matter of carefully matching up two images that are overlapping each other. So the final result is this right here. You see the mountain peak lines up, the shoulder lines up, that right side mountain lines up, 
And then if you look carefully at the horizon, the black line in the middle of the photograph there, you will see that the cross line, which was the predicted amount of the mountain visible, actually lines up with the horizon. Now in the original video, Jay Tolan Media One went on for another 15 minutes with a very elaborate analysis of this photograph. There were numerous landmarks misidentified and the conclusions were completely unsupported that this entire mountain was visible, when in reality, as you can see, only the top is visible. Our conclusions are as follows. Number one, this mountain is clearly visible from Malibu. Number two, precisely the amount of mountain that was predicted by the advanced curve calculator was visible. Now, the crosshairs are a little high on the horizon on this image. There are three possible causes for this. Number one, the observation height was listed at 150 feet. He was clearly between 150 and 200 feet, but may have been a little bit higher than 150 feet. Number two, there could have been just a little bit more refraction than would be standard. Or three, a combination of both. However, even given an error of 500 feet one way or the other, nearly a mile of this mountain is not visible. On a flat earth, the entire mountain would have been visible. This is undeniable proof of curvature. While DITRH, Anthony Riley, Nathan Oakley, and all of the leaders of the flat earth movement heralded this image as a proof of the flat earth, it is indeed confirmation of curvature and a spherical Earth. What's more, by measuring the amount of obstruction due to the curve of the Earth, the radius of the Earth could be calculated from this photograph alone. I think it's time that we have a serious talk about this flat Earth movement. It is claiming to be science, yet does not respect evidence. In science, your conclusions are based on your data. In Flat Earth, there is a narrative in this movement, this cult, that says the Earth is flat. And great efforts are being put in to try and find data that somehow can be shoehorned into that. This example is just one of many. I have several of them up on the screen right now. Every single video, every photograph that I have reviewed from the Flat Earth community that claimed absent curvature, clearly demonstrated curvature. Now, the results of this one example, this one photograph, does not confirm the spherical Earth. You combine this data, which clearly supports a spherical Earth, with that from Miles Davis, from Wolfie 6020, from Sly Sparkane, from Soundly, the data supporting curvature is overwhelming and undeniable. Yet, the Flat Earth community, including their major leaders, DITRH, Nathan Oakley, Anthony Riley, touted this as proof of Flat Earth. Now, there are only two conclusions with that. Number one, they had no idea what they were looking at, and they were too interested in supporting their narrative for this movement of theirs to bother looking into it. Somebody said that it turned out to be a flat earth, so they ran with it. Okay. The other conclusion, and the one that I suspect is true, is that they're simply incompetent. They have no idea what they're doing. They don't have any understanding of science. They don't respect evidence. And they're doing this for their own reasons. This is not science. The flat earth is not science. It's little more than a cult. It's like looking for Bigfoot. People in this community like to talk about finding truth and critical thinking. It's time to start using some. Because if you look at the evidence, if you apply critical thinking, the Earth is a sphere. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Feel my brain getting real sick.
soul. 